this is Ralph Wilson with Web Marketing Today. I'm at Search Engine Strategies in San Jose, and with me is Mike Green. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, the voice of search engine optimization that's really taught a generation of us uh, how it really works and what it's about. Uh, Mike, I appreciate the kind of perspective you give because you, you kind of see the big picture and communicate that. Uh, we're t talking today about the, the future of search, but to do that, we need to kind of see where we've been. What do you see as the stages that we've been with search? Well, first of all, thanks for the compliment, Ralph. It's always great to see you. Um, in terms of stages, I mean, uh, when I first got into the industry, we were looking at 1997 when I was looking very seriously at search engines, and just about everything that I did back in the day then was based on on-page techniques of looking at text. Um, but when search engines started, that was basically all they had in terms of technology. And then when they started to evolve and, and introduce network theory, which was all about looking at linkage data and the way that websites link together, the way that pages are linked together, um, it all of a sudden became much more interesting. But more recently, with the launch of uh, Google's universal search and uh, 3D uh, over at, uh, at Ask, um, some people are beginning to think that it's quite threatening to the industry. But I see where we're going in search as being one of the most interesting, most exciting periods that we've had to date. Now, you mentioned 3D. Tell me what 3D is. Okay, 3D is kind of just the um, three-column. They're saying three-dimensional three over it, uh, okay. at ASK, but basically it's just yeah. the fact that if you're going to have a look at their results now, they actually have three columns that they can use to present information, mm -hmm. whereas if you look at Google, even with their universal search, uh, they only have those two columns because the third one is where they make all the money. Okay. Uh, now, now you, universal search... Uh, it sounds like this is something that Google is rolling out somewhat, but not completely. What is universal search? Well, basically, they're looking at the fact that they have all of this data other than just information about a URL and a web page. They have data from YouTube about videos because they own YouTube. Uh, they own FeedBurner, so they have uh, a lot of data about blogs, which blogs are very popular. They have Google Base, where people are uploading their uh, videos and uh, images and also putting in um, addresses for local search and that sort of thing. So what they're trying to do is take a look at, say, one URL, for instance, which is very popular, and say, um, uh, what, is, what else do we know about this particular URL? And then using heuristics, bring all of these things together. So you get a combination of results you may have. Um, uh, news results, you may have video, you may have a blog there, there may be a stock quote that goes with it. And all the more you're beginning to see that in Google's results if you have a look. For instance, even with local search at one time, you would only ever see those results at the top of the page. But now for smaller businesses, this is a really interesting time because folded right inside the, uh, the SERPs, the, uh, the results page, frequently you can just click a little box and bingo, you have a map, name, address, mm -hmm. telephone number. So for, for local search and for smaller business, it's actually very, very interesting. So the average small to medium business uh, with the advent of universal search and assuming that Google decides to roll it all the way out, what kinds of things should we be doing? Well, again, we need to carry on doing everything that we've always been doing, looking at our web pages, making the site easily uh, crawlable so that uh, Google can get all of this information, but then starting to look at the kinds of things that are beginning to turn up in the results, for instance, video from YouTube. Um, you may have uh, um, uh, TV ads you've done locally that might be interesting to put into YouTube. Your radio ads could be good that you can use in a podcast. Um, I, I know this kind of thing, the, uh, uh, podcasts and videos that people are getting involved in now. At one time, we used to just put them together and upload them. But if you have a look at an RSS feed, um, the kind of thing that you're doing for subscriptions, you can actually optimize that feed for this piece of video. You can do that for a podcast and the same for your blog. So... Now, the particular video we're shooting here, I have two options. One is I could stream this from my site, and therefore the universal search would find it at wilsonweb.com, mm -hmm. or I could put it on YouTube. What do you see as the pros and cons of those, those kinds of choices? Personally, I would look at uh, the three opportunities that you have, have it streaming and uh, have it optimized on your own site. I would put it into YouTube and I would also go and upload it through Google Video as well because I do believe there is a correlation between uh, video at Google itself and also video that's being viewed over in, uh, in YouTube. Okay. Where else do you see search going? Universal search is the buzzword these days. Anything else you see on the horizon? Well, I, again, I think the big thing is going to be local. A lot of the 
smaller businesses, the kind of businesses that you've been targeting and given great information to for all, for all of these years, uh, found themselves a bit on the outside, I think, of search. But now with the kind of thing that you can do, like, for instance, just going to uh, Google Local and making sure that they have your name, address, telephone number, and those kind of things in there correctly, uh, those sort of opportunities, and then certainly... Uh, mobile search is going to become very, very big. Just this morning at the keynote, uh, Marissa Mayer from Google was talking about the opportunities that they have there. So, I now, now mobile search looks to me like it's going to require whole site redesigns to be able to, to really optimize that across the board or creating a new site for mobile. One or the other, both sound like a lot of work. I, I, from a development point of view, I think there's a lot you can do with an existing site just using XML. Um, obviously, you need to be ready for that particular little browser coming in. Uh, but, yeah, to be on the safe side, you can actually just create a, a brand new site purely for people on the move. Yeah, Mike, it's always great to be with you because I learn from you. And uh, you not only look at the, the top level of things and make it easy to understand. You've been in the basement and seen all the underpinnings and can take it all the way up. Tell us about the company that you're with now. Well, I recently joined Bruce Clay, and Bruce is kind of like a legendary name virtually in the industry. He's been around uh, since the early days again. And, you know, Bruce and I have known each other for a long time. He's been very innovative. He has his uh, search engine optimization tool set, which a lot of people have used to get their own business off the ground. He has a great training course. Uh, he's very passionate about the business. And we've talked, you know, quite a lot about getting together and doing something. So more recently we said, well, let's just give it a try and see where it goes. All right. Glad to be here with Mike Brian. Uh, this is Ralph Wilson with Web Marketing Today.